Assalamu alaikum. I welcome uh, you all to our seventh interactive series of ZU Dialogues in collaboration with Ziauddin University Faculty of Law. Uh, Ziauddin uh, University Dialogues is a platform that was initiated by Amr Shahzad, the head of the PR communications department at Ziauddin University. It's a space where renowned personalities, analysts are invited to give their valuable input and expert opinions on different aspects of social, political, cultural, and socioeconomic topics, as well as to conclude the discussion with some good constructive ideas and suggestions, particularly towards the youth who are the next generation. In today's session, we'll be talking about the Pakistan Media Development Authority. Is it protection or control of the media industry? Just to give a background, in May 2021, the federal government proposed an ordinance to develop a centralized media regulatory authority named the Pakistan Media Development Authority, PMDA. Journalists and human rights activists and political readers across the country have raised alarms about the proposed legislation that it would bolster the government to censor and restrict the media. And in other words, to, to stifle its voice. The government on the other hand claims that an ordinance setting up in the PMDA would replace the quote unquote fractured regulatory environment and fragmented media regulations currently in place. The proposed PMDA would bring all of the media in Pakistan from print, television, radio, film, and digital media under one regulator. I'm joined today with uh, a former in information minister, uh, Senator Mr. Javed Jabbar. He's also a former advisor to the chief executive on Pakistan on national affairs. Uh, he, uh, as well, is uh, the co-founder and chairperson of the Strengthening of Participatory Organization, um, where in the SPO, he deals with similar matters related to the public. He's also a filmmaker and writer. Uh, so I think that would be very important to have his insight in that as well. And of course, he's worked in the uh, previous administration on new laws and policies de dealing with the regulation of media and their personnel in radio channels and the freedom of information. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome him to our discussion. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Uh, Javid Jabbar, on this occasion. And uh, I would like to actually open the floor and get your thoughts immediately on what, you're, what do you think dealing with the media um, this PMDA, yeah, is it uh, something uh, it is going to give more freedom uh, and, and rights and protections to the media? Is it something what the government is suggesting it's too fragmented, regulatory policies are not in place, and here the free media is more and more free and we can only look to examples like India and their media. And at the same time, is it also uh, on the other hand, is it something to restrict free media? So, after an opening perspective, what, what is your thoughts behind this? Please. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Thank you very much for your gracious invitation and introduction. It's a pleasure to interact with the Dr. Ziauddin University Forum and Mossab yourself. Uh, it's been a pleasure to revive contact with you. This is an important subject. It is currently the center of attention. We have demonstrations taking place outside parliament. We have a convergence, and I use the word convergence because I'm coming to that as a key uh, element of the controversy. We have a convergence also between the political opposition and virtually all segments of the media. But ironically, there are truths, as I have written shortly, there are truths on both sides of the controversy. There is truth in what the government wishes to do, which is it wants to attempt to address the unprecedented phenomenon of convergence. Never before in human history, never before, have the contents of all media come together into a single medium, which is the smartphone. So side by side, you have the content of print, radio, cinema, TV, social media platforms, all 
embroiling, embroiling, and churning in one single medium. And what happens within that broad churning mass? You have authentic, reliable journalism. You also have quasi journalism, which is deficient journalism. And you have outright disinformation and fake news, all side by side. This has never happened before. In a newspaper of repute, you could rely more or less on what is printed. If there was an error, that newspaper would report that error next day or two days later, as most newspapers should. So, how do you deal with this? This is not a phenomenon peculiar to Pakistan. It is a global dilemma. So, where the government wants to say that this is an unprecedented tackle it shares the same dilemma with the United States on one hand and with China on the other. And look how the two countries deal with it. Interesting. In the United States, which is the epitome of freedom of expression, Twitter has to ban President Donald Trump because he is creating falsehoods. And on the other, China refuses to allow platforms like Google, platforms like uh, Facebook, it invents its own. And their content is rigidly controlled. Mm. Now, Pakistan is not like China, even though China is one of our closest friends. China is a single party state. Mm. We can't do what China is doing. We can't do what the United States is doing. Because the United States also allows Four letter words to be spoken mm -hmm. with the holy names of prophets. Jesus, for example, the prophet Jesus is become an exclamation point mm -hmm. in Western discourse and freely available on global media, leave alone American media, on platforms like Netflix and Amazon. You have characters taking the name of Jesus Christ with four letter words. Mm. Now, that is freedom of expression, and there is no control there. In Pakistan, with our own culture and our own society, I submit that we have extraordinarily high freedom of expression. Mm. But where I empathize with journalists is the fact that for the past 20 years, a reported number of about 70 journalists have tragically lost their lives. Mm in unnatural, violent way. And no one has been found and punished for such terrible crimes. Several others have been injured. Some journalists have been deprived of their professional income or their job. Media are subject to coercive pressure. But it is also true that media in Pakistan has very high levels of freedom of expression. If you go by the global ranking, we will not agree because in the global rankings, Pakistan comes very low right. because of the fatalities, because of the coercive pressures. But we know that virtually every day, whether it is TV channels or social media or even some leading newspapers, there are, condemn there are condemnable comments on the armed forces, on the judiciary, on politicians, on their alleged or real corruption. So, there is no uh, restriction on the kind of criticism that can be heard against people in public life, if that is one measure of freedom of expression. Right. So, on the one hand, there is truth in the government stand that we need to regulate, to eliminate fake news or to punish fake news. On the other, Journalists are very justified in saying that any attempt to regulate may end up victimizing those who are innocent in the name of those who are guilty. So it is a dilemma, and the only way forward is dialogue mm -hmm. and consultation, patience, patience, not to give up just because there is no agreement in two weeks. 
not to give up because there is no agreement in two months. It's not going to be possible. Even in the European Union today, we find examples where the European Union has, has imposed very heavy fines on Google for being exclusive. We find fines being imposed on Facebook. So even countries with levels of freedom of expression much more than Pakistan are not able to accept what they think is freedom of expression. So leave alone Pakistan. Pakistan, I think, can rightly be proud that out of 54 members of the OIC, we have some of the highest levels of freedom of expression. Mm. So there needs to be dialogue to arrive at a consensus. How do we regulate? Right. And my humble submission is three forms of regulation. One, effective self-regulation. Uh, nam, nam self-regulation, because so far, I'm sorry to say, mm -hmm. India have not conducted self-regulation. There is abysmal dis disregard of basic principles of how to present news, right. especially on electronic media. There is a hysterical, hyped kind of presentation which no other uh, country witnesses perhaps in the way except India. Mm. And in many ways, we are just trying to imitate India in the way we preach and shout the news. And that's just one aspect, rushing to the screen in the name of breaking news without verified, authentic data. So self-regulation, effective self-regulation, followed by social regulation by civil society groups like bar associations, teachers' bodies, mm. medical associations, uh, associations of writers, people who have influence or stature, who should also prescribe code and caution media and government where either of them violates norm. And thirdly, state regulation, because that is indispensable. Every country has state regulation. So if we achieve a balance of self, social, and state regulation through sustained dialogue and negotiation, we would achieve a consensus on how to proceed with the PMDA. I will stop there because right. I have some specific comments on PMDA itself. Yeah, and, broadly, those are my yeah and, I, and I wanted to actually pull in and I'm glad you triggered some uh, discussion because one of the things that came to my mind from when I was listening to you when you talked about some other Western nations, I know in England, there's very particular laws between news reporting and editorialism. So for example, the BBC is not allowed to do what the sun does. And if they do, then the regulator comes in and, and gives them the, the proper, you know, dolly on the head or what, whatever you, it may be. But the point is that they're, they're bifurcated in their, in their relevant realms. Whereas in Pakistan, that is not the case. So there is space that we can say that, like, as you said, that through, with, through these three different steps of self then social, then, then governmental. You speak a lot about consensus. And one of the things that a lot of human rights activists and journalists are kind of having an issue with is the whole discussion that PMPA is in circles. There is no draft policy in I think there was a two-pager I got from someone I know in, connected inside. Uh, but public And that's one of the things that as consultation in developing law, yeah, you know, journalists could be in, obviously involved, KGI, the TV channel owners as well. Why is that not happening? And I want you to just oppose that with Jab Aap Khud Information Minister the in 2002, and you, you know, liberalized and it was a massive change of policy, and Geo was started, and then many private channels come that uh, came up to kind of balance that conversation, what went on in your time as well. How did you go about doing that? And what advice you may have on, on PMDA? So I'd love your thoughts on that. Thank you. Look, I have been a member of the Kabina for three times. I have been a member of the Kabina for two times. So, when we have done something, in particular, during a government of the first time, when we have a law of law, 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 we have a law of electronic media regulatory authority. That was called EMRA, EMRA, not PEMRA. And we had a law of law, 
کہ ہماری غیر منتخب نگران حکومت کے جانے کے بعد فیبروری 1997 میں یہ پہلا قانون جو میں نے خود ڈرافٹ کیا اور کابینہ نے اپروو کیا ایون تو آئی واز منسٹر فار پٹرولیم ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم ہمیں توقع تھی کہ ایک منتخب حکومت جو آ رہی ہے نواز شریف کی دوسری حکومت اس کو ایکٹ آف پارلیمنٹ میں بنا کر چار مہینے کے اندر اندر مستقل قانون بنائے گی لیکن کیا ہوا ایک منتخب حکومت نہیں چاہتی تھی کہ آزاد الیکٹرانک میڈیا ہو کسی میجر اخبار نے سوائے بزنس ریکارڈر شاید اداریہ لکھا کہ بھائی یہ قانون لیپس ہونے والا ہے اس کو ایکٹ آف پارلیمنٹ بناؤ سب جشن منا رہے تھے جمہوریت کا لیکن 1997 میں ہمیں پھر بنانا پڑا سٹیزن میڈیا کمیشن آف پاکستان اس سے قبل میں سپریم کورٹ میں بھی میں نے فائل کیا تھا پٹیشن پبلک انٹرسٹ کہ ایئر ویوز آف اے کنٹری آف پبلک پراپرٹی اور کسی کو اجارہ داری کا کانٹریکٹ نہ دیا جائے پھر جب نہیں ہوا وہ سن دو ہزار میں جب میں مشرف صاحب کی کابینہ میں تھا تو پھر ایک غیر منتخب حکومت غیر منتخب حکومت نے ریمبو کے نام سے اپروو کیا آرڈنس میں نے استعفیٰ دے دیا کابینہ سے لیکن ٹو دا کریڈٹ آف جنرل مشرف ود دا چینج آف دا نیم فرام ریمبو ٹو پیمرا ہی پرومل گیٹڈ دی آرڈنس ان مارچ فرسٹ مارچ ٹو تھاؤزینڈ اینڈ ٹو تو دیٹ براٹ اباؤٹ دس ریڈیکل چینج ان دی الیکٹرانک میڈیا لینڈ اسکیپ آف پاکستان تو ہر دفعہ ہم نے کانسلٹیشن استعمال کیا I have conducted round tables in Lahore, Islamabad, Peshawar, Quetta, Karachi, invited all the stakeholders, presented them with a draft of the actual law and asked them to comment on it. And after accepting most of their suggestions, which I could, some I could not accept, we finalized the draft. So consultation is the key to achieving good public policy. and respecting what the other groups have to say. Aaj dafa, hakoomtoon ko kuch sakh izdamaat karne padte hain jo maqbool nahi ho to. And a government should not look for popularity. A government should do what is right for the country if it is doing it with integrity and sincerity. I ni samajhta ke maujuda hakoomat ne there is a lack of sincerity. There is probably a lack of judgment کس چیز کو کس طرح کرنا ہے لیکن آئی ووڈ ٹرسٹ دیر اوور آل سنسیورٹی آف پرپز آئی ڈونٹ تھنک دیٹ دے مین ٹو ایکچولی سپریس دا میڈیا اینڈ کنٹرول اٹ دے جسٹ وانٹ ٹو سی ہاؤ ڈو یو ہولڈ میڈیا اکاؤنٹ اور اس میں میڈیا ہیز ٹو لک ان ٹو اٹس اون سیلف دیکھیے وہ شعبہ جو دوسرے شعبوں سے شفاف احتساب مانگتا ہے خود اپنے بارے میں بالکل غیر شفاف وی ڈو ناٹ نو دا فائنینشیل انٹرسٹ آف موسٹ میڈیا ہاؤس واٹ آر دے کراس سیکٹورل انٹرسٹ ویئر ڈز اے میڈیا اونر اور اونر آلسو ہیو ادر انٹرسٹ دے ڈونٹ نو ہماری جو جنرل میڈیا لٹریسی ہے پاکستان میں اٹ از سو لو موسٹ پیپل ڈونٹ نو ہو اون واٹ ایکسپٹ دا میجر گروپ And who is the editor? What is his professional qualification? What role does the publisher play in determining the content or the owner play? How much role, what role does the anchor play? Is the anchor only reflecting what the advertiser thinks is going to get high ratings for this program? Advertiser ki bhi koi accountability nahi. I mean, advertising on electronic media has become pollution. Har pandra minute, har das minute. Okay, Nietzsche, streamers be children, Inter- you know, interrupting, distracting people. So media themselves require tremendous internal reform, openness and accountability. The problem is that the civil society part does not have the resources that media do or that the government does. And civil society so far has been dependent on overseas donors Now that the environment for overseas donors has become very negative, there is a lack of funding for activism by civil society. Let me conclude with two aspects of PMDA which I totally disagree with. 
उन्होंने जो कॉन्सेप्ट नोट सर्कुलेट किया है उसमें ये लिखा गया है कि मीडिया ट्राइब्यूनल्स कोई केसेस को जब हेयर करेंगे यू कैन ओनली अपील टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट विच आई फाइंड वेरी स्ट्रेंज बिकॉज यू कैनॉट बाईपास द हाई कोर्ट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट विल रिजेक्ट दिस लॉ एज बींग अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अगर ये लॉ पास हो जाए तो इट इज कंप्लीटली इम्प्रैक्टिकल टू हैव अ मीडिया ट्राइब्यूनल दैट बाईपास द हाई कोर्ट नंबर वन नंबर टू एक ऐसे दौर में जब हर रोज अरबों के हिसाब से मिलियन ऑफ बिट्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन आर बींग प्रोड्यूस इन सोशल मीडिया इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया हाउ कैन यू हैव अ मीडिया कंप्लेन्ट कमीशन दैट कैन डू जस्टिस हाउ मेनी पीपल विल हैव टू बी एम्प्लॉयड यू विल क्रिएट अ न्यू ब्यूरोक्रेसी और एक जब ब्यूरोक्रेसी बनती है तो उसके अपने बहुत नकायत होते हैं तो instead of reforming the existing law this law pmda wants to create a new uh, kind of you know single window opportunity which i don't think is practical multiple jurisdictions bhi hain vertical jurisdiction uh, federal government regulates electronic media the provincial government regulates print media so how can you do away with this vertical jurisdictional conflict फिर लोकल लेवल पे प्रोविंशियल में देर आर मल्टीपल ज्यूरिस्टिक्शन अगर किस कोई मालिक मीडिया का मालिक अपने वर्कर्स को तनख्वाह अदा नहीं करता तो ये मामला फेडरल नहीं है वो लोकल लेबर कोर्ट पे जा सकते हैं लोकल जज के पास जा सकते हैं डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन तो देर इज अ होल प्लेटफोरा ऑफ लोकल ज्यूरिस्टिक्शन तो एनी वे let me conclude because it's now cinderella time and i have to uh, catch <laughs> well catch before you go just to... shortly i would like i mean definitely i i love ke aapke jo tanqeed tha the, the critical comments on the P, P, pmda but uske andar kya positivity bhi aapko nazar aayi hai wo bhi main chaahu aapke sath share aap share kare or any final thoughts uh, in the sense ke aapke jo rai hai is mamle mein what recommendations you will give to the government uh, if you were still in there uh it was back to this community. my humble yeah i i have all the sympathy for i mean <laughs> i have sympathy for the government being besieged like this because it is being harshly criticized for being anti media now i beg to disagree i don't think it is anti media it is misjudging the way forward as i have already said and my prescription is very simple open dialogue withhold the bill withhold the draft till you hear everyone try to incorporate their concerns into any new law deal with the existing institutions to the maximum extent possible and create a new institution only with consensus and a consensus that must include measurable indicators on how media themselves reform themselves the responsibility is not only on the state and on uh, working journalists it is also on media owner ye sabse zyada jo tupe hue rustam hai jiske nurani chehre aapko nazar hi nahi aate screen par jaise ye nurani chehra mujhe nazar aa raha hai is par jawdin university ki janib se kaash ke har roz media owner ke chehre nazar aate along with the tv anchor they are the ones behind the scenes who are calling the shot along with the advertisers so greater transparency on the part of media infinite patience on the part of government to accommodate all points of view and tell the public what the government is wanting to do through the same kind of vigorous campaign which the media are running and ensure that physical attacks on journalists or depriving journalists of their income their professional job or threatening them that should stop that is the responsibility of the state the buck stops with the government and they must take much more effective action thank you mohsab and i'm giving you to take your leave or should be asked very wise words very wise words i hope uh, the government takes uh, heed to your wise wisdom especially with your years of experience uh, not only in federal government but in general and with the media so forth so 
Thank you again, Javed Jabbar Saab. To talk about this important issue, I'm joined today with an esteemed group of panelists who honestly don't need any introduction. Uh, but I am joined by Mr. Mazhar Abbas, who's a senior journalist and analyst and the former General Secretary of the Pakistan Federal Union of Journalists. Uh, he's currently a senior analyst at GEO and also a senior com col columnist with the Jung Press. I am also joined by Mr. Zarar Koro. He's the current affairs commentator and analyst and the co-host of Dawn News TV show Zara Hartke. And Zarar has been on the television screens and in journalism for an extended time. Doc, I'm also joined by uh, our renowned academian, Dr. Huma Bakai, who's an international relations expert and policy analyst, associate professor at the Social Science and Liberal Arts, and former associate dean at the Faculty of Business Administration at IB at Karachi. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining today's session. And uh, I would like that uh, to start off the conversation with uh, Mazhar Abbas Saab, if you can tell me, uh, in this situation that we look at, um, I, I'm curious, you have a lot of comments from May 2021, you said that in existing framework, we have seven already. Hai. We cannot, uh, we don't need something else. What does this new law propose to do? government ka claim ye hai ki ye digital media ke upar restrictions nahi hai isko kis tarike se hum control kare we have examples in america where social media used by even a former president of the united states triggered what happened in capitol hill we have arnab goswami in india as well in an unrestricted media so there are concerns about digital media as well how would you balance that? Ek to theek hai, existing law framework hai, but digital media or your social media to address karna kis tarike se aap samjhenge ke is cheez ko current law framework mein kis tarah se handle kare? Dekhi, ek kaam to yeh ho sakta hai ke saari siyasat par, siyasi bayan bazi pe he said or she said par pabandi laga dein, to aap aadhi fake news se vaise bad jayenge. Bad jayenge. Yeh to khair in, in a lighter note tha. On a serious note, if you just go through the statement of a Speaker of National Assembly today regarding uh, who actually ordered the, uh, the uh, staff of the National Assembly to lock the press gallery. Now, the Speaker said that he has, uh, he has directed the staff after consultation with the Parli Parliamentary Reporters Association. Now, the Parliamentary Reporters Association said there was no dialogue and uh, uh, they categorically denied that they have even consulted the, uh, by the speaker. And they, the, the entire elected body basically were protesting um, since, since yesterday when the, when the president was, was addressing the session. And even before that, a night before that, they even went to the press information department to inquire about their press card and even the National Assembly Secretariat. And they, they were totally refused. So, so this is, I mean, uh, for me, either the Speaker of National Assembly was telling the truth or the Parliamentary Reporters Association was telling the truth. And it's, it's not confined, confined to this. If you remember one of the federal minister, uh, I think few months back, uh, on a TV talk show, said that Kalbushan Yadev ko to already hawale kar diya gaya hai. Ab maine to wo khabar nashir kar di, aur zahir publicly ek minister keh raha hai. Kaun us minister ko pakde ga? Was, was there, even the government sought any explanation from the minister? Itna bada bayan national security ke hawale. What is the fake news? And whether government is sincerely or seriously considering any legislation in the name of fake news, I don't think so. If you go through the proposed draft or the proposal of, uh, which was floated by the Federal in Information Minister, Mr. Fawad Chaudhary, out of seven le legislation, at least five have nothing to do with the fake news. For instance, Motion Pictures Act 1979. 
what it has to do with the fake news. Newspaper Employees Condition of Service Act 1973 has nothing to do with the fake news. Press Council of Pakistan, whose chairman has not been appointed by the, by the government for the last three years, it has nothing to do with the fake news. News Agencies Books Registration Act 2002 has nothing to do with the fake news. Except for, for Pamra to some extent and to, to Becca, which is not part of this draft, there's, there's not a single legislation which has anything to do with the fake news. So the very basic uh, uh, idea of Mr. Pawar Chaudhary a serious contradiction. Either he has not read any of these seven legislations and just trying to, to pressurize my strong apprehension is that this authority idea has been rooted since 2004. During, during President Musharraf's period, it was first rooted and not only this one, the media city, I mean, uh, I have spoken to some of the former chairman of the PTV and the and uh, officers of the Ministry of Information, and they they opposed all this. They said the, uh, they wanted to establish media city in Islamabad, where there's no TV channel at all. So they suggested, and they they even they even picked up the uh, uh, American Center in Islamabad near Dechok. For this, for this city. And since 2004, a, they, they paid the rent and they have not uh, established anything, even although initially it was inaugurated, I think it was in 2006, 2007, it was also inaugurated. But that, that media city doesn't exist. Now they are, they are, and even that idea is nothing new, nothing new. Media University. Now, they wanted to establish media university in Islamabad again, just to discipline the media people. I mean, that's, that's the idea I was told. So these are all ideas. There's nothing new, except that the present information minister, when for the first time he was appointed as minister of information, he, he uh, uh, circulated some of the draft. And as Zara remembered, we even discussed the first draft when, when uh, Fawad Chaudhary first you know, initiated uh, this idea. But his, his successors, uh, Shibli Faraz, as well as Firdaus Ashik Hawa, they didn't agree with this draft and they never, they never pursued that draft at all. Now he's insisting that this draft or his proposal has to do a lot with the media workers because they are, they are not being paid uh, uh, regularly and uh, their working condition, which is which is fine. Yes, I agree. But but by repealing Newspaper Employees Condition of Service Act, actually they are depriving the only legislation for the last fifty years, which really protected the journalists, and newspaper uh, workers under the law. Although it has not been properly enforced or implemented, but that's the only law available in the last 50 years which really uh, provided some relief for the workers. So again, there's a serious contradiction. There's, there's a law available for the fake news in order to, you know, the defamation law of 2002, you just need to enforce it. You just need to amend it. So the, the whole idea of establishing the media development authority is nothing but to control the media, the print media, even, even if Zarar tomorrow wants to write something, write a book, he has to apply it for the registration. He has to uh, send his draft, the content of the book, and they will, they will, they will then issue the NOC, whether if they agreed or not. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the day this authority is established, all licenses of TV channels, all declaration of newspapers cease to exist. 
then these channels and newspapers have to reapply for registration and they'll they have the, the choice with, with the authority whether they issue it and then after every every year you have to you have to apply for the renewal so if in the in in those years and uh, if you have committed or if the government feels or the authority feels that you are not uh, reporting or uh, printing or publishing with responsibility they can they can cancel your license so it's it's basically a very serious challenge it's more or less the same wish in 1960 ayub khan president ayub khan uh, when introduced new press and publication ordinance which was further amended in 1963 and after that many newspapers were closed down many newspapers were were uh, taken over by the government including pakistan times morning news mashrikh imroz so i i i seriously fear that if if they will be able to establish this authority it will be disaster for for critical voices it will be disaster for dissenting voices and i i am afraid that the uh, as far as the fake news is concerned if this authority will spread the fake news okay news like like ptv because because as far as i am concerned i can say with authority that the biggest source of fake news in pakistan has always been ministry of information since its formation since it was launched in the 50s it has always been used and they always use a stick and carrot policy for the newspapers i mean if you if you are pleasing the government if you are showing you know pro government statements and headlines then you'll get the maximum advertisement not only the advertisement through secret fund which was which was later abolished in 2002 and lastly go oh, please go through the book It's, it's now in the book form. the The media commission report, which was compiled by or prepared by Jab Mr. Javed Jabbar and Nasir Hasan Daisa, on the direct on on this petition of the journalists, Ramit Mir, Absar Alam, and we were all part of that uh, that petition. They established the the former Chief Justice uh, Mr. Khan Chaudhary uh, established the media commission, which in the in I think six to eight months. um or 6 to 8 weeks they submitted their report direct report is pending with the ministry of information and they just need to go through that report they just need to enforce implement that report it has covered each and everything as far as the media is concerned and i still have the copy uh, copy of that book it's not in the book form also so they have not even consulted considered or even gone through i'm sure uh, fawad choudhry has not gone through the, the the recommendations of this media commission so i am afraid he is on a different agenda and and the timing of this this controversy is very interesting it has come at a time when journalists when media and government were coming closer on on and and because of their uh, their uh, joint uh, effort the journalist protection bill was passed in the national assembly and the journalists welcomed that that commission that uh, report and within weeks after that uh, journalist protection bill uh, mr fawad chaudhry came out with this uh, proposal which has again it's it's, uh, it's now of the ongoing struggle and let's see who will win they, they may yeah. brute force in the parliament they may uh, um, uh, you know uh, pass the bill and establish the authority mm-hmm. but then the struggle will go on yeah no that de- definitely i think you spoke about two three things and this is where i would like zarar to come in and kind of comment ek to aapne timing aur ye jo previous jo kaam ho chuka hai skin the commission ka aur sabse major baat zarar saab jo i think that is extremely important is that Uh, there's no consultation it's all done in all this secrecy i mean zyada tar hame ek ek proposal document mila do pager ka uske andar bhi it's unclear uh, i mean obviously this journalist being a journalist yourself you're a stakeholder and what's about to take place and you not being consulted there is no draft to even have a public debate on it 
एक टाइमिंग और ये कंसल्टेशन के हवाले से आपके मैं चाह रहा हूँ थोड़े से कॉमेंट्स हो uh let's 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 be clear about it right um first of all i do have to give credit to the government where it is due and um which is that they have certainly built consensus they said they were going to build consensus they've built it except that it is 100% against the pmda so that is a rare achievement and i and i do want to i do want to briefly applaud it um their greatest skill it seems is that where they need a scalpel they use a hammer and where they need a hammer they use a bulldozer and um you don't just see this in this particular thing you see it in the single national curriculum you see it in electronic voting machines everything they need to do they do is like oye chor oye daket tumhari islah ke liye hum ye kanoon la rahe hain beta aise kaam nahi theek hai when you start doing something um in this manner you may have the greatest law uh ever you may have the best intentions ever i am not going to believe you simply because of the way you are doing it now and also the the arguments are and i'm going to say this clearly malified and utterly dishonest utterly dishonest they talk about they say ke oh we are here to kick up fake news making it seem as if fake news is some kind of epidemic in pakistan i assure you it is not Yes, Pakistan has been targeted by fake news network. EU Disinfo Lab uh, has the entire report. Um, in fact, several years ago, right here in Zaydeen University in uh, Karachi, I did a TED talk on fake news, and this is before it blew up into this giant international issue, and people just sort of picked it up and and used it as a bludgeon to bludgeon in their own narratives without understanding even what the term means. The number one source of fake news in Pakistan right now is the government. Okay. and this is not new they have been like this when they were in the opposition as well pantis puncture kya tha sir kya wo sach tha wo jhoot tha theek hai fir aap kahenge ki nahi wo to siyasi bayan tha beech mein shahbaz sharif has taken billions of uh, dollars and commission from chinese companies i would love to repeat what the chinese diplomats in public had to say with it but i think you'd get censored for it right um then you have gola the aviation minister blatantly speaking falsehoods in the national assembly itne logon ke paas license hai itne logon ke paas license nahi hai with the consequence that pia took a hit internationally who's going to arrest him for that right the list goes on recently you had a special advisor to the prime minister saying ki ji aapko pata hai ki ji hum to ji uh, gray list se nikalne wale the lekin phir nawaz sharif chale gaye aur unhone apni medical report dikhai aur unhone hame gray list mein dal diya yaar allah ka wa- allah ke waste mujhe maaf kar do right so they create a red herring they create a false flag and then they say we are fighting against this false flag it to me is almost exactly like the the argument you get from certain incels when you talk about say um women's rights in pakistan and the fact that you know perhaps men are responsible for the vast majority of of sex crimes and assault and they'll be like hey, so you want women to walk around in skirts ha huh? by when in pakistan do you see women walking around in skirts you create a false narrative and then you say that we are fighting against it like this say we are fighting against fake news no then not they're not doing anything of the sort the closest they've come to it is that they think that an official denial makes a story fake it does not the ministry of the interior or someone or the other on social media has this fake news checker all they do is stamp fake on any news report that they don't like or they don't agree with you see so when you start out in this sort of heavy handed way you lock the press gallery and then you say we're building consensus sometimes i suspect that the government actually is opposed to bringing the pmda because of very ways in which they're trying to sort of push this down everyone's throat that's not going to work um you see and again this reminds me of abhi mazhar sahab baat kar rahe the ayub khan ke dol ki mujhe to zya ka dol yaad aata hai aur isliye nahi main ye nahi kahunga ki ji batani mashallah nahi nahi एक रेफरेंडम हुआ था ना उसमें सर जिसमें कहा था कि क्या आपको जयाउल हक और इस्लाम कबूल है अब कौन इस पर नहीं कहेगा कि यार अब मतलब आपने इधर और की तो चॉइस हमें दी ही नहीं है तो यहां पर भी उनका ये आर्ग्यूमेंट है कि क्या इसका मतलब है कि आप फेक न्यूज के हक में नहीं सर हम फेक न्यूज के हक में कोई नहीं है लेकिन लाइक मजहर साहब सेट देर आर ऑलरेडी लॉज अवेलेबल फॉर इट फिर वो क्या करते हैं कि दे मलिशियसली एंड फॉल्सली एड इट टू fifth generational warfare now i know that this term is much abused in pakistan okay and that also has been abused unfortunately and if people mock this term in certain circles it is because of the way it has been misused by the powers that be 
Absolutely, it exists. There are hybrid warfare. There are information networks that are targeting you. But guess what? They're not in Pakistan. They're outside Pakistan, targeting Pakistan. When we talk about the fake news of the Indian media, when we talk about the fake news that propagates on social media, who debunks that? Not PTV. If PTV was at all capable of doing this, then in the last fifty years, we wouldn't be here right now, screaming that "Oh my God, we're losing the information war," which we are. Um. People like myself debunk it. People like Mazhar Sab debunk it. The legitimate news channels, which have, for better or for worse, built up some degree of credibility, unlike PTV, which is just his master's voice. You know, the one with the gramophone and the little dog listening to it, right? That's what PTV is. It's always going to be that. No one trusts state media. Why should they, right? I'm not saying that people should trust print uh, private media to, uh, to a great extent. We have many, many, many faults. We have many, many, many problems. But this is not the solution for it. When these stories come in, when there is this targeted campaign against Pakistan, you mentioned Arnab Goswami. We are the ones who take it. We are the ones who mock it. But rather than taking us on board, you are determined to create another enemy where an enemy doesn't exist. And this again is something that I find amazing because बचपन में ना जब हमने तारीफ पढ़ी थी तो जर्मनी की जब हमने तारीफ पढ़ी थी आपको पता है जर्मनी जिसका जापान के साथ बॉर्डर मिलता है ना वो वाली जर्मनी उसके बारे में जब हमने पढ़ा था तो वी लर्न दैट यू कैन नॉट फाइट अ वॉर ऑन टू फ्रंट्स दिस गाइस सीम टू इंसिस्ट ऑन फाइटिंग अ वॉर ऑन फाइव फ्रंट्स एंड स्टिल प्लेइंग द विक्टिम सो आई आई ऑनेस्टली आई ऑनेस्ट टू गॉर आई डोंट नो व्हाट दे वांट टू डू बट व्हाटएवर दे आर ट्राइंग टू डू दिस इज सर्टेनली नॉट द वे टू डू इट जी Well, you know, now uh, we see, you know, with the uh, Abbas Saab, Mazhar Saab, and the Zarar uh, Saab as well, you know, being with the journalist profession, Dr. Homa, I'd like to call you in. Uh, obviously, being an academic, we hope you have a, uh, you know, I guess a, a stake that's not really a stake, but as a citizen, obviously you do, and as a researcher and analyst. Um, एक तो जरार साहब ने मेंशन किया था इन रिस्पेक्ट टू जिया का दौर याद आता है मुझे याद भी है कि इमरान असलम साहब ने भी मुझे बताया था उस जमाने में इस तरह होता था कि पूरे पूरे अखबार जो है आउट ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट यूज टू बी प्रिंटेड ब्लैंक एज ए साइन द सेंसरशिप राइट एंड नाउ एट द सेम टाइम यू नो यू कम टू यू नो मीडिया फ्रीडम्स इट्स आर्ग्यूड केम इन मिलिट्री एरा इज वेल वेर पीपल आर्ग्यू दैट आप फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव इन रिस्पेक्ट टू Uh, uh if you in respect to uh, musharraf saab's era and even mazhar saab mentioned that with the commission uh that was there so when we balancing these things that you know musharraf in musharraf's time period the media opened up there's a lot of criticism that happens that media wasn't trained for that and wo jo ptv ptv ke purane jo uh trained log hain unke jo production hain and, and the level of their maturity in that was much more we faced those challenges in that growth a geo starting off and then you know many other channels joined that so there's a balancing thing here on one side you have the censorship which is you know we we definitely get that but at the same time do you think musharraf gets enough credit for opening up the media i'd like your thoughts on on that sort of the part of the debate <laughs> this is interesting uh, and this is this is becoming more interesting because uh, you i am an academician and i take a lot of pride in that but the channel that i worked most for is ptv uh, and interestingly i was engaged uh, by ptv during musharraf's time and when they and i was working at a private channel at that time a newly private channel that had come up news one and uh, when they called me in for an interview i actually went on and i said ki ji aap mera kya karenge main to wahan private channel pe kaam kar rahi hu i have things to say which you will not enjoy to unhone kaha nahi aap aaye hum aapko kuch nahi kahenge and then i joined ptv aur bahut interesting hua uh, musharraf ke zamane mein kaam kiya mujhe kabhi pm house se aur islamabad se koi phone nahi aaya उसके बाद मैंने पीपल्स पार्टी के साथ भी काम किया और मैंने नवाज शरीफ के साथ भी काम किया और कई दफा मेरा प्रोग्राम बीच में बंद भी हुआ और मुझे एक फोन भी आया कि इनसे कोई क्या कह रही है सो आई मीन रियली दिस डिस्टिंक्शन के जी ये जो हैं वो डेमोक्रेटिक नॉर्म्स हैं और ये वो वाली नॉर्म्स हैं ये मिलिट्री नॉर्म्स है आई आई डोंट थिंक दे एग्जिस्ट विद द वे मीडिया फंक्शन टूडे एंड दर इज अ रीजन वाई आई एम सेंग दिस द रीजन आई एम सेंग दिस इज कि हम जिस जमाने में इस वक्त रह रहे हैं उसको हम अंग्रेजी में कहते हैं द पोस्ट ट्रुथ कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट और वो पोस्ट ट्रुथ कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट है यानी सच के आगे का जमाना पोस्ट ट्रुथ का जो कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट है ये डिक्शनरीज uh, में आया 2016 में 
लेकिन 2016 से बहुत पहले ये पॉलिटिकली क्लीशेट था और जो बेसिक प्रेमिस है लिबर्टाइन मीडिया फंक्शन थ्योरी का वो अंडर थ्रेट है उसमें इलीट कैप सब इलीट कैप्चर है एक्सेसिव कमर्शलाइजेशन है कमोडिफिकेशन ऑफ न्यूज है तो ये जो एक हाई मॉरल ग्राउंड लोग रहते हैं ना कि जी हम प्राइवेट मीडिया पे बैठे हैं और तो हम 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 इंडिपेंडेंट हैं इनमें से कोई भी इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं है ये कमोडिफिकेशन की नीड्स को केटर करते हैं ये कमर्शलाइजेशन की नीड्स को भी केटर करते हैं और ये इलीट कैप्चर की नीड्स को भी केटर करते हैं Uh, बहुत सारी मिसालें दी मजहर और जरार ने आई होप दे स्टिल लिस्निंग टू मी लेकिन आप मुझे बताइए कि कौन है जो बात करता है बहरिया टाउन के हवाले से खुलकर टीवी के ऊपर नहीं करते आप आई एम ग्लैड यू डू दैट आप जरदारी को बिलावल को आ, नवाज शरीफ को इमरान खान को जो मर्जी कह सकते हैं इस टीवी पे बैठ लेकिन प्लीज मुझे बैंकिंग सेक्टर को और मैकडोनल्ड को और कंस्ट्रक्शन माफिया को कुछ कहकर उस टीवी पे दिखाइए और फिर देखिए आपका शो चलता है या आपका शो बंद होता है या आपको कमर्शियल्स मिलते हैं या आपको नहीं कमर्शियल्स मिलते एक्चुअली आई थिंक द मीडिया इज अ होल न्यू गेम और उस गेम को हमें केटर करने की जरूरत है और उसमें मैं ये बात बिल्कुल मानती हूँ कि एक्सेसिव रेगुलेशन जो है या ओप्रेसिव रेगुलेशन जो है वो उसका उसका समझिए वे आउट नहीं है लेकिन एक और भी बात है कि ये ग्लोबल फिनोमिना है जहाँ इंडिपेंडेंट वॉइस की एकेडीमिया की इन सब की आवाजों को दबाया जा रहा है ये सब पाकिस्तान में नहीं हो रहा ये ग्लोबली हो रहा है साउथ एशिया में और ये और भी ज्यादा समझिए टॉक्सिक हो गया क्योंकि यहाँ हम जो पर्सनालिटी कल्ट डेवलप हुआ है हमारी सियासत में चाहे वो हमारे इमरान खान हो या वो मोदी हो अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड शायद इमरान खान का कल्ट उतना नहीं है जितना मोदी का है लेकिन पर्सनैलिटी कल्ट तो है कोई उसको चैलेंज नहीं करता सियासी जमात के अंदर His word is the last word. There is no dissent. तो ये जो हमने culture of dissent खत्म किया है मेरा ख्याल है कि वो इस वक्त जो नया media का ball game है उसका एक अहम component है जो एक concerned citizen है जो एक critical thinker thinker है उसकी space जो है वो shrink हो रही है और you know if you call a spade a spade it is seen as anti-social, anti-national and anti-peace. ये एक ग्लोबल रियलिटी है ग्लोबल फिनोमिना है जो यहाँ पर भी अनफोल्ड हो रहा है तो मुझे कभी कभी लगता है कि इसको ब्लेम uh, गेम के तौर पर फिंगर पॉइंटिंग कर के तौर पर ये कहना कि जी ये uh, इमरान खान की हुकूमत ने कर दी इमरान खान हुकूमत इज जस्ट रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू टू वट द सिचुएशन इज बड़ी अच्छी सी बात की थी अभी जरार ने जहां उन्होंने कहा था कम्युनिकेटिंग कम्युनिकेशन स्ट्रेटेजीज या क्रिएशन ऑफ इनोवेटिव स्ट्रेटेजिक नेरेटिव ऑल ऑफ दैट जो मॉडर्न स्ट्रेटेजिक कम्युनिकेशन है चाहे वो बिजनेस हो पॉलिटिक्स हो वॉरफेयर हो इट इज अ बैटल ऑफ नेरेटिव एंड स्टाइफलिंग डिसेंट इज नॉट एन ऑप्शन लेकिन हर हर तरफ सच भी नहीं है क्योंकि पोलिटिकल लाइज भी ऑप्शन नहीं है एग्जेजरेशन भी ऑप्शन नहीं है स्पिन भी ऑप्शन नहीं है लेकिन इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि नेरेटिव सही बिल्ड हो रहा है जो पोस्ट ट्रुथ इरा है इसमें हम एक ऐसा नेरेटिव बिल्ड कर रहे हैं विच इज अराउंड फीलिंग्स तो यू हैव ब्रेग्जिट यू हैव ट्रम्प इलेक्शन यू हैव पीपल टॉकिंग अबाउट अगेंस्ट द साइंस ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज और ये सब बातें पिच भी होती हैं मेरे और आपके साथ रेजुनेट भी होती हैं और ये स्टेट टेलीविजन और प्राइवेट टेलीविजन की कहानी नहीं है कहानी ये है कि जो लिबरटाइन मॉडल है जहां प्रो पीपल मीडिया था या फोर्थ पिलर ऑफ द स्टेट था या विसल ब्लोअर था वो पूरा कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट मीडिया का इस वक्त कॉम्प्रोमाइज है उसके ऊपर सवाल या निशान है क्योंकि आप कुछ पीटीवी के शैकल्स आपको नजर आते हैं प्राइवेट मीडिया के शैकल्स आपको नजर नहीं आते लेकिन आप में से कौन ये कह सकता है कि आप बिल्कुल खुलकर बात कर सकते हैं और आप पर कोई कदफन नहीं है आप बिल्कुल खुद खुलकर लिख सकता है आप पे कोई कदफन नहीं है और ये भी बात सच है कि हमारे जैसे मुल्कों में जहाँ ओप्रेसिव और एग्रेसिव लेजिस्लेशन को की जगह अभी भी बाकी है तो उसकी वजह से यू हैव डिसअपियरिंग जर्नलिस्ट एंड यू हैव कंट्री विच इज कॉल्ड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डेंजरस कंट्री फॉर द जर्नलिस्ट बट एट द सेम टाइम आप देखते हैं कि जो ये रिग्रेशन है ये ऑपरेशन है इसको एक पुश बैक मिल रहा है क्योंकि पूरी दुनिया बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रोलिफरेशन ऑफ द मीडिया ऑल्टरनेटिव व्यू के पीछे भाग रही है और वो अल्टरनेटिव मीडिया अगर आपको रेगुलेटेड मीडिया से नहीं मिलता तो आप वो अल्टरनेटिव मीडिया दूसरी जगह से ढूंढते हैं और ये ये एक्सरसाइज ही फ्यूटाइल है 
आप ऑल्टरनेटिव मीडिया की या ऑल्टरनेटिव व्यू की जो प्यास है उसको आप नहीं दबा सकते उसको आपको केटर करना है और इस वक्त इसीलिए मैं समझती हूँ कि ये जो पूरी सिचुएशन इस वक्त आप मुल्क में देख रहे हैं इसके एक तो मैं हुकूमत के लिए भी कहूंगी उन्होंने एक अपने लिए बहुत बड़ी मुश्किल क्रिएट की है एक ऐसी ऑपोजिशन जिसके पास कोई रिलायंग पॉइंट नहीं था जिसके पास जुड़ने की कोई जगह नहीं थी उनको उन्होंने एक पॉइंट दे दिया है जिस पर जर्नलिस्ट तो बैठे ही आके हर कलर का जर्नलिस्ट आके बैठा है फॉर गुड रीजन लेकिन हर ऑपोजिशन जमात का बंदा भी उस धरने में जाके बैठा और उसने कहा कि मैं जी इसको अपने फेवर में हाईजैक कर दू तो एक तो हुकूमत ने ये गलती की कि उन्होंने ऑपोजिशन को एक समझिए बहुत खूबसूरत चीज दे दी जिसके गिरद वो जो मैंने पहले बात कही थी फीलिंग्स के अराउंड जो नेरेटिव है उसको पिच कर सकते हैं ये उन्होंने किया है सब हुकूमत ने ये ब्लंडर किया दूसरी एक ऑलरेडी बहुत पोलराइज पॉलिटिकल सिचुएशन को उन्होंने मजीद पोलराइज किया है और थर्डली ये जो इस वक्त एक आप एरोगेंस देखते हैं जो मेरे ख्याल है कि इमरान खान साहब की हुकूमत का खासा है ये ये पोलिटिकल एरोगेंस भी सेल्फ डिफीटिंग है क्योंकि फिर जो जो नेरेटिव का स्ट्रेटेजिस्ट है वो ये कह रहा है कि आप कौन सी फीलिंग्स इवोक कर रहे हैं आप वो फीलिंग्स इवोक कर रहे हैं जो फिर आपको एज एन ऑपरेसर देख रही है और थर्ड बात इनको डैमेज कंट्रोल भी करना पड़ेगा इनको रिसीड भी करना पड़ेगा मैं आज आपके तवसु से ये बात कर रही हूँ कि मेरा नहीं ख्याल कि ये ऑर्डिनेंस विल फ्लाई इट कांट है और ऑलरेडी आप देख रहे हैं कि जो हुकूमती वजरा हैं वो इस पर ग्रास हॉपिंग भी कर रहे हैं बैक ट्रैक भी कर रहे हैं अपने आप को इससे से डिसकनेक्ट का भी मुजाहरा कर रहे हैं तो एट द एंड ऑफ द डे मुझे लगता है कि वी जस्ट वी जस्ट लिविंग इन एन एरा वेयर इट्स 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 अ होल न्यू बॉल गेम एंड बिफोर यू हैव टू लर्न द गेम बिफोर यू ट्रम्प इट और इविन चीट एट द गेम तो अगर हुकूमत इव इवन वॉन्ट्स टू चीट एट दिस गेम they they need to learn the the game game first. Right now they don't know what the game is. I'm gonna like just <laughs> yeah. applaud that. I mean, know what, know what the game is. game is. Well, well, I, I, I think I it's interesting it because what what the game wow. is, and 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 I'm just gonna you know dip a little bit into another jurisdiction and kind of maybe bring the conversation back when it comes to having uh, you know just freedom without regulation. and which level to regulation and you know we did exist uh, the seven but like if you look at england right up britain mein jaye wahan pe unke qawaneen bahut isme strict hain ki aap news reporting kar rahe hain jaise bbc hai to aap news reporting kar rahe hain agar aap editorial hai to sun ki tarah aap jo hai cheeze chhapa sakte hain but you can't mix the two there is a bifurcation there where the public are known that this is news and this is someone's editorial spin on it so when we talk about the what dr huma bakai mentioned about these post truth right and the alternative truth that you know became very popular in trump's era so this is this not a concern and, and and is there another way to possibly combat this obviously the public needs to be informed and we can't have a person who's or 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 an entity regulated who may have interest in it as well because they want a certain narrative and perspective but we do understand the power of the social media space i mean we just have to look in in neighboring afghanistan we can look at how effective the taliban social media space has been so these are concerns at the same time uh, zarar i would like your 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 insight on this and then i'd, I'd come to mazhar saab as well you shed light the, on the, that as well the, pro- the problem the problem as i see it is um you know that we have to define these terms very carefully now don't we i mean when you talk about regulating social media what does that mean when you talk about um you know alternate media what are exactly are we talking about because the devil is in, always in the details right you see so we cannot use these things as excuses for repression right i mean abhi jo abhi uh, dr bakai was mentioning um you know ki like where where are the vectors of of censorship right bilkul i mean we can talk about the politicians you know we can't obviously for uh, we can't talk about certain institutions i'm not even going to name them right there's that also as far as corporate censorship goes i'll tell you some personal experiences which you might find very interesting but i think you'll find them fun um sakib nisar right the sabak chief justice sakib nisar right now he used to love it now ke piche matlab 10 camera hai kisi ke matlab wo hospital ke kamre mein ghus gaye kidhar idhar ghus gaye udhar ghus gaye and everywhere he went he would make breaking news and there would be tickers you know there's only one place that he raided raided where um it made no news at all and that was nestle 
<laughs> now why do you think that is right why do you think that is is it because people love water so much no not really it's because you know there are major advertisers so these things do happen these things do happen but we have to see overall the scale there is no such organization that is perfect take the take new york times for example right you come to israel you come to national security of the us man they they can be super right wing but at the same time the 10 innocents that were killed in the last us drone strike in afghanistan they did that investigation i don't think we would ever be able to do that investigation um again i will agree with dr bakai ke it is not so much what they do it is also what they do but it's also the way in which they're trying to do it now i'm talking about the government here right i'll give you a very small example recently on apsa komal show um fawad choudhry sahab was asked ke ji um what happened with all those attacks on journalists you know absar alam or former journalist asad ali tur matiullah jaan right instead of answering that he starts accusing her of um uh, you know peddling enemy narratives you see the sawal gandum jawab chana is not a very reassuring strategy right so the very way in which they're going about it it's creating great suspicions in my mind and now i will agree with uh, again agree with dr bakai ke they themselves have created an atmosphere in which passing this now seems impossible unless they go down the ordinance way which will lapse you see so um i don't understand um why it's so why it's second nature for them to simply cause confrontation it's almost as if they seek it out you see because i can find i can find no other rational explanation for it and the theory that i'm now coming up with unfortunately is that perhaps then at the end of 5 years you can say ki ji humne to bada kaam karne ki koshish ki thi lekin aap dekh rahe hain ki hamare mafias hame oppose kar rahe hain hum hame dobara le aaye taaki hum inko set kar de so oh, that's the only logical plausible explanation i can come up with but perhaps these are issues in which logic is a, a liability ji yeah and I, i think that was similar criticism that some people give to the 18th amendment before people's party left um but uh, that's a, a, another topic no, no, that the, thought, 18th amendment, the yeah. 18th amendment they actually managed to build consensus on that it's not yeah. impossible ji yes not lekin impossible. lekin consensus nahi hota ke oi chor oi dark mafia aao main tumhare liye kaam karna cha raha hu it doesn't work like that absolutely Mazhar Sahib, I'd like to because Zarar Sahib touched a very interesting topic where the judiciary and the media. Uh, we know last month there was a case that really got highlighted, and I think that's a related kind of topic to this. Daphne just a pehle bhi kahi timing. Timing is very important to us. So, in reflection to that case that was before Justice Faizi said that all of a sudden, you know, three four days later, the judges came back and they said, "Whoa, this can't happen." आप उसको किस तरह से इस मतलब डू यू थिंक दैट इज आल्सो रिलेटेड टू दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन दिस पब्लिक डिबेट ऑन मीडिया एंड रिस्ट्रिक्शंस एंड एंड द कॉन्वर्सेशन अराउंड दैट आई आई लाइक टू यू टू शेड लाइट अ लिटिल बिट ऑन दैट पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कशन देखिए ये जो ये जो स्क्रीन है ना इसने बड़ी तबाही मचाई है तबाही इन अ सेंस के इस स्क्रीन की वजह से ज्यूडिशरी जो है वो ग्लैमराइज हो गई और कैरेड अवे हो गई वरना वरना मैं लिखते हुए दस मरतबा सोचता था कोर्ट रिपोर्टिंग इज द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट वर्क मुझे पता होता था मैं जाके और इवन इवन जो 1950 का पाकिस्तान फेडरल यूनियन ऑफ जर्नलिस्ट का कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन है उसमें लिखा हुआ है कि यू हैव टू बी एक्स्ट्रा केयरफुल वेल रिपोर्टिंग ऑन कोर्ट केसेस जो भी लिटिगेशन के मामला हैं लेकिन चैनल की अट्रैक्शन जो है उसने सुपीरियर जुडिशरी को भी अपने रोमांस में डाल दिया आई स्टिल रिमेंबर के कोई केस था जो जर्नलिस्टों का केस था तो चीफ जस्टिस इफ्तार चौधरी थे उन्होंने एकदम ऑर्डर किया कि जी कोर्ट खाली कर दी जाए और कोई वीडियो चलाने वाली थी कि पुलिस ने जर्नलिस्टों पे जो मारपीट की थी उसको वो देखना चाहते थे तो हम सब बाहर निकलने लगे तो ऑल ऑफ मसल इफ्तार चौधरी साहब ने सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूम में कहा कि मदर साहब आप कहाँ जा रहे हैं आप तो यहां बैठे हैं आपकी मुझे जरूरत है इस उसमें ऐसा भी हुआ कि कोर्ट की हेयरिंग डिले हुई कि जी पूछा गया है वो जियो ए आर वाई वाले ये लोग आ गए नहीं आए अब ये कभी भी नहीं होता था इसका तस्वुर नहीं था कि जुडिशरी में ऐसा हो सकता है इवन टुडे आई स्टिल रिमेंबर आई थिंक द प्रेजेंट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ द सिंध हाई कोर्ट और द फॉर्मर चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट उसने कहा कि मुझे मीडिया कवरेज की बिल्कुल कोई जरूरत नहीं 
तो प्लीज डरिंग हेयरिंग के दौरान इवन अगर कोई सिलसिले में आना भी चाहे तो आप ना आए क्योंकि मुझे कवरेज नहीं चाहिए एक वक्त ऐसा भी आया कि एक लॉयर ने खड़े होकर ये कहा कि जी मैं अपने क्लाइंट का केस वो कर रहा हूं और और चैनल्स पे टिकर्स कुछ और चल रहे हैं और उस लॉयर को शटअप करवा दिया गया क्योंकि उनकी उनकी कोर्ट की हेरिंग्स के कोर्ट के उनके उनके वो चल रहे थे उनके ऑब्जर्वेशन का मीडिया कवरेज का तस्वुर नहीं था बिफोर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया बिफोर टू थाउजेंड सेवन इट्स नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ द मीडिया इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ द व्यूअरशिप के की ग्लैमराइज हो गई जुडिशरी भी ग्लैमराइज हो गई गवर्नमेंट भी इमरान खान क्या कहते थे दो हजार अठारह से पहले कि अगर अगर ये मीडिया नहीं होता तो पीटीआई इस पोजीशन पर आज तक नहीं आती ये कोर्ट एंड कोर्ट इमरान खान को अगर आज हमारी पार्टी इस जगह पे मौजूद है और इलेक्शन जीतने की पोजीशन में इट इज ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ द मीडिया और मुशरफ साहब का ऑब्सेशन क्या था वो वो चैनल्स जो आए हैं वो तो एक कारगिल कारगिल के बैकग्राउंड में आए कि उस समय जब कारगिल हो रहा था I was I was uh, uh, working I was reporting for local media लेकिन उसके साथ हमारी AFP writers वगैरह कि हम सब गए photographers जो हैं ISPR गए हमने कहा कि इन photographers को ले जाएं camera men को ले जाएं they want to cover the other side of this story और और ये जो हमारे मुजाहिदी लड़ रहे हैं या जो भी लड़ रहा है तो उन्होंने कहा नहीं नहीं ये तो national security का issue है आपको हम नहीं ले जा सकते उसपे उस वक्त जो ISPR की जो भी officer थे मैंने उनसे कहा एक बात याद रखी है कल तस्वीरें तो छपेंगी दुनिया में लेकिन वो आपकी साइड की तस्वीरें नहीं छपेंगी कल क्योंकि आपकी साइड की कोई तस्वीरें हैं ही नहीं आप क्या या तो पीटीवी है या एपीपी है या रेडियो पाकिस्तान है आप आप इवन जो फॉरेन न्यूज एजेंसीज है उनके भी कैमरामैन को और फोटोग्राफर को नहीं ले जा रहे और एग्जैक्टली exactly यही हुआ तो फिर एट द एंड ऑफ द वॉर देर वॉज अ कंसेंस अमंग दी स्टैब्लिशमेंट वॉट एवर गेन वी अचीव थ्रू इन कागल वी लॉज द मीडिया वॉर लेकिन जो इंडियन मीडिया का इस वक्त आप चाहते हैं कि हम वो मीडिया बन जाए दिस इज पैथेटिक इंडियन मीडिया को देखते हुए मैंने तो शुरू में जाता था फिर उसके बाद मैंने जाना छोड़ दिया देर इज नथिंग एक्सेप्ट फॉर फेक न्यूज एंड फॉर कैंड अब पाकिस्तानी मीडिया को भी वो बनाना चाहते हैं यस देर आर प्रॉब्लम्स इन पाकिस्तानी मीडिया देर आर प्रॉब्लम्स इन देर आर पीपल जो एक वो हाइप क्रिएट करते हैं लेकिन इट्स मच मच रिस्पॉन्सिबल देन द इंडियन इंडियन मीडिया आपने नहीं देखा होगा पाकिस्तान मीडिया में कुछ जिस तरह बॉम्बे में हुआ था कि एक फेक टेररिस्ट को खड़ा कर दिया गया उसकी पूरी वीडियो बनाई गई ऐसे कि वो इस जगह पर खड़ा है और वहां से उससे उससे बीपर लिया जा रहा है ये सब और एट द एंड ऑफ द डे पता चला ये सब फेक था और फिर इंडियन प्रेस कमीशन ने उसका नोटिस लिया सिमिलरली पाकिस्तान में एक टेलीविजन चैनल था उसने उसने खबर लगाई इन 2009 थाउजेंड नाइन अबाउट द डी नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट जो लोग जो जजेस जो है वो बहाल हुए थे उन सब जजेस को डी नोटिफाई किया जाए इट क्रिएटेड अचुएशन जिसमें स्टॉक मार्केट क्रश कर गई एक सिचुएशन क्रिएट हो गई जजेस जो है अपने चेंबर्स में बैठ गए कि हम नहीं जाएंगे जब तक ये गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से क्लैरिफिकेशन नहीं आए गवर्नमेंट ने ये कहा कि हमने तो कुछ किया ही नहीं है तो यू कैन यू कैन यू यू गो एन आस्क द रिपोर्टर और दी चैनल के जिसने ये खबर चलाई उसके बाद एक कमीशन बना विच वॉज हेडेड बाय मिस्टर हमीद आरो जिसमें एपीएन भी पेश हुई सीपीएनई भी पी एफ यू जे भी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन भी और उस रिपोर्टर से पूछा गया कि जी ये खबर आपने दी है तो इस खबर पे आप स्टैंड करते हैं तो डू यू हैव एनी एविडेंस पहले तो वो समझा शायद सोर्स मालूम करे उस, उसने कहा हमीद ने कहा कि आई एम नॉट आस्किंग यू टू डिस्कलोज योर सोर्स बट द बट आफ्टर द डिनायल The burden of truth lies on you. 
यू हैव टू प्रूव योर स्टोरी और फिर जो उसकी फाइंडिंग्स थी उसकी ऑब्जर्वेशन थी वो यू थी कि स्टोरी ऑफ सच अटिव नेचर नीड टू बी रिकन्फर्म सिर्फ कंफर्म नहीं करें रिकन्फर्म करें विद मोर देन वन और टू सोर्सेस अगर सोर्स बाय नेम है तो ठीक है लेकिन कम से कम आपके पास दो या तीन सोर्सेस होनी चाहिए कि आप इस तरह की स्टोरी पे स्टैंड कर पाए तो हमने तो वो सेल्फ अकाउंटेबिलिटी और उसका हमने तो उस चीज को स्टैब्लिश किया ये वो बुक है जो जावेद जपार साहब और इनकी किताब जो कमीशन की रिपोर्ट है फोर हंड्रेड पेजेस फवाद चौधरी और उनकी गवर्नमेंट जस्ट गो थ्रू दिस रिपोर्ट इट टॉक अबाउट हाउ मीडिया कैन बी इंप्रूव आप एक, एक और कानून लेकर आ रहे हैं ये है मेरे पास कोई हजार हजार जो है सफात की किताब जिसमें सिर्फ मीडिया लॉस है इसमें एक एक कानून का और इजाफा हो जाएगा जो अथॉरिटी ले आएंगे आप इससे तो इससे तो मीडिया नहीं आपके उसमें आएगा यू हैव टू यू हैव टू इम्प्रूव योर सेल्फ पी टी आई के फैसल जावेद साहब जो सेनेट की इंफॉर्मेशन कमेटी के चेयरमैन है जो पी टी आई की इमरान खान की हर तकरीब के होस्ट होते हैं वो मतलब उसको वो करते हैं मॉडरेट करते हैं उन्होंने कहा फरु हबीब से जो उनके मिनिस्टर थे कि भाई आपने एक हंगामा खड़ा किया हुआ है और यू हैव नथिंग इन योर हैंड अब लाना क्या चाह रहे हैं आप हमें तो बताएं तो इतनी सीक्रेसी इतनी जो है कभी जो आपसे आर्ग्यू करते हैं आप कहते हैं आपने पढ़ा होगा नहीं तो भाई मुझे बताएं मैंने क्या नहीं पढ़ा होगा मुझे सिर्फ ये बताएं कि आपके जहन में क्या है आपके जहन में अगर सिर्फ फेक न्यूज है तो फेक न्यूज और डिस को you have you just have to go through all the statements of imran khan yeah the, definitely i think we fake news ka ek agar uh, us pe focus rahe not try to wrap up those seven aur dekhiye jab opposition ka hai na dekhiye jaise huma baat kar rahi thi opposition abhi bhi jo camp mein aaya hai was there camp mein bilawal shahbaz maulana fazlur rahman un sab se maine ek baat ki thi ki jo baatein aap is camp mein baith ke kar rahe hain जब आप हुकूमत में हो तो इन बातों को याद रखिएगा क्योंकि जो अपोजिशन में बैठ के बातें करते हैं वो बड़ी मुख्तलिफ होती हैं जो हुकूमत में आके बातें करते हैं वो बड़ी मुख्तलिफ होती हैं ये इमरान खान से भी मैंने कहा था कि आप जो यहाँ कमिटमेंट करके जा रहे हैं 2007 में जब वजीर आजम बनिएगा तो ऐसे ही रहिएगा और यही बात मैंने बेनजीर भुट्टो साहबा से की थी दो Mr. Sahab, your point is a old wise saying from my father. He said that a politician, when he says yes, he means maybe, and when he says maybe, he means no. And when he says no, he's no longer a politician. <laughs> so I think, in in reference to that, we will always, you know, hear that during the campaigns, many promises and what it turns out to be. And you know, in your reference to the judge, I, I, you know, just because I just remember this reference, Sir Mia Abdul Rashid. Uh, who was the first chief justice of Pakistan was so meticulous about his engagement with the public so meticulous not only did he not give public speeches he refused to even go to family weddings so that he may accidentally may run into somebody and have biasness so that level the kai or aaj ka judiciary uh, that's a big point but uh, huma saheb i wanted to pull you into the comp- uh, conversation on what i'd like to call the media military industrial complex <laughs> what i mean by that is that you know we hear about it in america all the time particularly during their war on terror ye afghanistan or iraq ke war mein you know for special access in the pentagon and you know in this type of behavior mazhar saheb also mentioned kargal ke time period pe ye zara us pe matlab there was a there was a kind of a purpose for this Uh, how do you see that kind of play into the dynamics when we talk about free media and free press particularly advertisement ki bhi baat hui thi idhar and ek uske upar bhi ek bada pressure hai government ke ads uh, you know recently i think certain news organizations have let go of many people as a result of that so how does the economic uh, kind of factor play in this laws apni jagah hai wo bad but what about the economic pressures as well on free media तो जी आए मैंने जब शुरू में आपसे बात की थी तो मैंने कहा था कि तीन चीजें हैं मीडिया का जो जो थ्रेटेंड है मीडिया वो कमोडिफिकेशन ऑफ न्यूज से है कमर्शलाइजेशन है और इलीट कैप्चर है ये तीन चैलेंजेस हैं मीडिया के और ये ग्लोबल हैं सिर्फ सिर्फ यहाँ तक महदूद नहीं है लेकिन उसके साथ मैंने एक और बात कही थी वही हमने कहा था कि हम जो है मेरे ख्याल अगले बीस पच्चीस साल में पोस्ट ट्रुथ इरा में ही रहेंगे 
और इस पोस्ट ट्रुथ इरा में जो इस वक्त पाकिस्तान में कोशिश की जा रही है वो उसका हल नहीं क्योंकि जो ये तमाम बातें जिनके साथ हम स्ट्रगल कर रहे हैं उनका आपने अभी जिक्र कर दिया 20 साल तक अमेरिका ने एक झूठी कहानी अपने लोगों को पिच की कि जी हम अफगानिस्तान में जीत रहे हैं नेशन बिल्डिंग कर रहे हैं औरतों के हकूक को प्रोटेक्ट कर रहे हैं रूल ऑफ लॉ लगा रहे हैं फिर बडग्राम की किस्से अब आपके सामने आ रहे हैं और जो वहां पे करप्शन थी वो किस्से भी आपके सामने आ रहे हैं इसी तरह एलगोर की किताब है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंसेंट जब उन्होंने इराक की इन्वेजन की तो उन्होंने एक पूरी कहानी अपने लोगों को भी दी दुनिया को भी दी फिर कॉलिन पॉवल ने जाकर फ्लोर ऑफ द हाउस पे एक प्रेजेंटेशन दी और फिर अपने किताब में लिखा कि मेरी जिंदगी का सबसे मुश्किल लम्हा वो था जब मैंने वहां जाके कहा इन्वेजन ऑफ इराक को जस्टिफाई किया तो मैं बार बार ये गुजारिश कर रही हूँ कि ये ग्लोबल फिनोमिना है मसला ये है कि जिस तरह हम जमूरियत के लिए ये बात कहते हैं ना कि जी जमूरियत बेहतरीन नहीं है लेकिन जमूरियत को बेहतर करने का तरीका ये है कि आप मजीद जमूरियत लाएं तो फ्रीडम्स ऑफ मीडिया या को भी बेहतर करने का तरीका ये है कि आप आप मजीद फ्रीडम्स लाएं मजीद ट्रांसपेरेंसी लाएं उसी फ्रीडम और ट्रांसपेरेंसी के अंदर से अकाउंटेबिलिटी होगी क्योंकि जो कंज्यूमर है इस वक्त सब लोगों ने कंज्यूमर की बात की ना वो कंज्यूमर रिजेक्ट करेगा इस वक्त जो कमर्शलाइजेशन या सॉर्टिंग ऑफ मीडिया ग्लोरी जुडिशरी ने की उसको आप यहाँ बैठकर रिजेक्ट कर रहे हैं जो मतीला जान गायब हुए और फिर मतीला जान अपियर हो गए या कुछ जर्नलिस्ट यहाँ से भाग गए और बाहर बैठ के बात करते हैं ऑल्टरनेटिव हमेशा आज की दुनिया में निकलेगा और जो अप्रेस अप्रेसर है वो एक्सपोज होगा और इसकी एक नहीं बीसीओ मिसालें विकी लीक्स है पनामा लीक्स है जिस पनामा लीक्स से मेरी तीन हफ्ते पहले आई वॉज इन कंसल्टेशन एट द यू एन काउंसिलेट वहां पे ये प्रिडिक्शन करते हैं कि क्या होगा उन्होंने कहा कि जी कोई चीज रोक ही नहीं सकती नवाज शरीफ को हुकूमत में आने से ही विल विन द इलेक्शन एंड द पनामा लीक्स कंप्लीटली रिवर्स द सिचुएशन तो मेरी गुजारिश ये है कि लेट्स लर्न द गेम फर्स्ट और गेम ये है कि आपको अल्टरनेटिव नेरेटिव पिच करना है जो झूठ पर नहीं बिल्ड हो सकता जो स्पिन पर नहीं बिल्ड हो सकता क्योंकि इन टाइम इतना इतना ओवरफ्लोड इंफॉर्मेशन एज है ओवरफ्लो ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन है लोगों को सच पता चलेगा तो ये जो शॉर्ट टर्म फायदा है वो नहीं चलेगा आप इंडिया की बात कर रहे हैं आप इंडिया आई मीन इंडिया इज फेसिंग ग्लोबल शेमिंग ऑन वॉट इट हैज डन लिटरल ग्लोबल शेमिंग ऑन वॉट इट हैज डन तो जाहिर है कि आई डोंट थिंक कोई थिंकिंग शख्स जो है वो चाहता है कि हम इंडियन मीडिया के उस पर चल जाए और इंडिया के अंदर से आप देखिए कितनी आवाजें उठ रही हैं इंडिया इज नॉट मोदी इंडिया इज मच लार्जर देन मोदी एंड आई ऑल्सो थिंक दैट पाकिस्तान इज मच लार्जर देन दिस एंड द पाकिस्तान जर्नलिस्ट लैंडस्केप और मीडिया लैंडस्केप इज मच लार्जर देन दिस ऑर्डिनेंस दैट इज कमिंग आउट और मेरा तो जाती ख्याल है कि ये जी रिवर्स होगी इट कैन नॉट फ्लाई और अगर आएगी तो इट विल बी शेट बिकॉज ये ये चल ही नहीं सकता हम जिस दुनिया में रह रहे हैं जहां हम काम कर रहे हैं जो अशकाल अब हमारे सामने हैं नेरेटिव की इंटरेक्शन की इंफॉर्मेशन की मीडिया लैंडस्केप की उसमें ये ये चल ही नहीं सकता तो मेरा ये ख्याल है कि अच्छा होगा जितनी जल्दी फवाद चौधरी साहब इस पर अपना आ, पीटीआई का फेमस यू टर्न करें और अगर ये एक्सरसाइज वाज टू टेस्ट वाटर्स तो वाटर्स टेस्ट हो गए और उन्हें कहीं से टके की भी सपोर्ट नहीं आई है उनके अपने लोग उसके बरखिलाफ उठ रहे हैं आई हर्ट पीपल हु सेंग कि इमरान खान ने कहा वी बिलीव इन फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन और ये जो फिफ्थ जनरेशन वॉरफेयर और नेशनलिज्म और ये सब कहानियां हैं ये भी आप इम्पोज नहीं कर सकते पाकिस्तान ने कितने अरसे ये कोशिश की कि आपके जो स्ट्रेटेजिक एसेट्स का कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट था वो एक्सपोज ना हो आपका एक्सपोजर हुआ और जब आपने वाकई अपनी टॉक वॉक की तो आपको कोई थोड़ी सी ब्रीदिंग स्पेस मिली दैट रिमेन्स द रियलिटी ऑफ टूडेज वर्ल्ड हम सब हम सब चाहे हम किसी भी शोबे में हों बशमूल मीडिया इंटरनेशनल सर्च लाइट्स के अंडर काम करते हैं और जो रिजेक्शन आनी चाहिए वो कंज्यूमर से आनी चाहिए और वो रिजेक्शन आएगी टिकटॉक की भी रिजेक्शन आएगी दूसरी चीजों की भी रिजेक्शन आएगी क्योंकि प्रोनोग्राफी है हर कोई प्रोनोग्राफी नहीं देखता लेकिन प्रोनोग्राफी अपनी जगह चलती है आप, आप क्या उसको रोक सकते हैं कुछ मुल्कों में इजाजत है कुछ मुल्कों में इजाजत नहीं है पेशावर में सबसे ज्यादा डाउनलोड होती है एंड दीज आर द रियलिटीज ऑफ द न्यू लैंडस्केप दैट यू आर वर्किंग विद सो लेट्स लर्न टू वर्क विद इट राधर देन अगेंस्ट इट मेरी ये सबमिशन 
Okay, thank you. Great. I mean, kind of final thoughts be this issue. Ke upar, main, uh, uh, ke paas ke in your in final thoughts on this issue on the PMDA, Dr. Homa Bukai says it's not going to happen. It's not going to buy. Now mandate. Hai. Um, what do we do? I about- have a... Uh- I have a flight to catch. Can I be excused? Sure, sure, sure. Isli mein aapke and uh, gentlemen, it was lovely talking to all of you. I stand yeah. educated. Thank you okay. all. Bye-bye. Um, so I would uh, like Zarar Saab on the point where uh, Dr. Homa Bakai mentioned, it's not going to fly. It's a political mandate. Hi hai, kisi se. But can we leave this space like this? Is there somewhere where we can do it? I mean, there is some. is there some positivity in PMDA? Uh, we just chunk it out and start on something fresh. It's got too chuck, much. Chuck it out. Chuck it out. Chuck it out and start on something fresh. Um, this is one thing that uh, Dr. Bakai said. I, I wish she was here actually to hear this. She's like, hey, I don't think any thinking person would want that. And I think that that is really the core of the issue. Are these people thinking? And if so, what are they thinking? Um, also, one last thing I would like to say is that we use the term fake news far too loosely. Everything is a question of degree. It's like this. I mean, if I were to give you an example, if I were to pick your pocket, that's a crime. If I were to come into your house and murder your entire family, that too is a crime. But there is a vast difference in degree, right? So when we talk about fake news, what are we talking about? Are we talking about someone inadvertently making a mistake with a decimal place in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a figure or are we talking about someone maliciously and willingly willfully um creating falsehoods with an aim with an aim to defame a person an institution or a political party or whatever there is a vast difference in these you see so when we we cannot take all fake news isn't a catch-all phrase I mean, misinformation and disinformation are as old as mankind. What has changed now is simply the speed and scale of it, right? That's all, all there is to it. So you have to differentiate. You can't just be like, yeah, fake, yeah, woh, fake, yeah, fake. You know, so first you define your terms. And unfortunately, I find that a lot of the confusions that come in and a lot of, say, the debates um, and arguments that we have is that we fail to define our terms carefully at the outset. And that's, that's what I would have to say. Absolutely. Mother Saab, I'd like your final thoughts on it as well. I mean, it's not as black and white as Zarar Saab says that, you know, in fact, that's my theory of life as well. Okay, everything is gray. And yeah. uh, it's just a shade of gray, if I may say it so. So, Mother Saab, in your uh, perspective, uh, I'd like you to shed light on your final thoughts on this PMBA. Seven, Saad Kawaneen already ho chuke hai. Ye digital media ke aapne bhi thoda express kiya ke ek alag tarikhe se isko kar sakte hain to maybe iske uh, izhar e khayal agar aap aakhir mein iske do rai de de to that will be helpful mazhar sahab are you there i think mazhar's gone blank uh, i don't know we might be having some technical issues there uh, but uh, thank you very much oh here here is mazhar sahab please I don't know if you heard me, Mother Saab, there's a little technical issue there, but I was basically asking hey, Zarar yes, Saab, ha, aapko, aapko, uh, did you hear what I said? I was saying that Zarar Saab ne ke not everything is black and white and it's basically a shade of grey at times. And it's she's to define karna bada ek important thing. And uh, I think that's something that, uh, you know, I would like you, you said before that it's been made of the seven digital media issue, it's to do it in a different way. But it's to do it in a wide way, uh, and then create this huge censorship with many prongs, mid- media tribunals bhi and all that. So what would you do with digital media? Ke kis se agar karne, what would be your suggestion if we're not going to take PMDA? देखिए सबसे पहले तो इस पूरे इस अथॉरिटी को विड्रॉ करें इस अथॉरिटी के हेलो जी जी आपकी आवाज आ रही है प्लीज सबसे पहले तो इस पूरे पूरे कांसेप्ट को जो अथॉरिटी का कांसेप्ट है इसको गवर्नमेंट विड्रॉ करे उनका प्रॉब्लम उन्होंने खुद फवाद चौधरी साहब हों फरूख हबीब साहब हों इवन प्राइम मिनिस्टर इमरान खान हों एक चीज कहते हैं कि जी हमें इस प्रॉब्लम जो है उनको सोशल मीडिया से प्रॉब्लम है डिजिटल मीडिया से प्रॉब्लम है हालांकि सोशल मीडिया के पाकिस्तान में तो एक तरह से आर्किटेक्ट मीडिया है कम से कम पॉलिटिकली यूज अगर उसको देखें लेकिन सबसे पहले आपको बिल्कुल भी एक अथॉरिटी बनाने की जरूरत नहीं है इस कांसेप्ट को आप ड्रॉ करें आपका प्रॉब्लम सबका प्रॉब्लम अगर फेक न्यूज़ है डिसइंफॉर्मेशन है 
میری ناقص رائے میں اگر بیٹھے تو میری تو ناقص رائے میں سب سے پہلے منسٹری آف انفارمیشن کو ختم کریں وہ سورس آف ڈس انفارمیشن ہے میں پروف کر سکتا ہوں سورس آف یعنی اگر آپ صرف جو نیشنل اسمبلی کی اسٹینڈنگ کمیٹی آن انفارمیشن ہے سینٹ کی انفارمیشن کمیٹی ہے ایون اگر کوئی اعلیٰ عدلیہ بھی صرف لسٹ منگوا لے پی ڈی آئی سے اور پروونشل انفارمیشن ڈپارٹمنٹ سے آپ نے کتنوں کو ڈکلیریشن دیا ڈکلیریشن کی لسٹ منگوا لے ایڈورٹیزمنٹ کی لسٹ منگوا لے ان کے جو جرنلسٹ جنہوں کو ایکریڈیشن کارڈ دیے ہیں ان کی لسٹ منگوا لے آپ کو اندازہ ہو جائے گا کہ آدھے سے زیادہ اخبارات انفارمیشن آفیسر خود نکلواتے ہیں وہ اخبار نکلتا ہے اس کو چار اشتہار ملتے ہیں دوسرے دن وہ اخبار بند ہو جاتا ہے پھر نکالتا ہے پھر بند ہو جاتا ہے یہ یہ سالوں سے چلا آ رہا ہے منسٹری آف تو سب سے پہلے تو اس سے ختم کریں آپ پھر آپ دو ہزار دو کا جو ایکٹ ہے ڈیفرمیشن کا اس کو افیکٹو بنانے کے لیے آپ اس میں اس میں ہیں اس میں سزائیں بھی ہیں اس کی سزا آپ بھلے انکریز کر دیں اس کے فائن یہ جو پچیس کروڑ آپ یہاں رکھ رہے ہیں اب پچیس نہیں پانچ کروڑ دس کروڑ ادھر رکھیں اور اصل چیز یہ ہے کہ اس کے فیصلے پھر ود ان تھری منتھس آنے چاہیے یہ انشور کریں کہ اس کے فیصلے تھے اب دیکھیں نا عمران خان نے پینتیس پنکچر کا الزام نجم سیٹی پہ لگایا نجم سیٹی نے اس کو سو کیا اس کا فیصلہ آج تک کیوں نہیں آیا شہباز شریف صاحب نے عمران خان کو سو کیا یہی تو ہوتی ہے نا انہوں نے انہوں نے کہا نا کہ یہ جھوٹی خبر ہے یہ جھوٹا بیان ہے یہی کہا تھا نا صحیح یا غلط میں نہیں کہہ رہا لیکن عمران شہباز شریف اور نجم سیٹھی انہوں نے جو عمران خان صاحب کو سوٹ کیا وہ تو اسی گراؤنڈ پہ کیا ہے نا کہ جی آپ بتائیں اور اس میں طریقہ ہے کہ یا تو آپ آپ آ کے پبلکلی اپولوجائز کریں کہ جی ہاں وہ غلط کا آتا ہے ڈیفرمیشن کا پہلی چیز یہ ہوتی ہے کہ آپ کہیں کہ میں کانٹیسٹ نہیں کرنا چاہتا آئی جسٹ وانٹ ٹو سرینڈر آئی وانٹ ٹو اپولوجائز اور اگر دوسری پارٹی وہ اپولوجی ایکسپٹ کرتی ہے تو ٹھیک ہے ورنہ آپ جو بھی جو بھی قانون میں سزا ہوتی ہے وہ ہوتی ہے اخبارات برطانیہ میں اخبارات بند ہو گئے عمران خان ہم سیلف وان دا کیس اگینسٹ این بوتھم اور تو ان چیزوں کو جس کی وہ خود مثالیں دیتے ہیں وہ پاکستان میں آپ قائم کرنے کو تیار نہیں ہیں آپ کو صرف پاکستان میں افیکٹو ڈیفرمیشن لاز بنانے ہیں میڈیا ورکرز کے حوالے سے آپ کو صرف آپ نے کبھی یہ دیکھا کہ میڈیا میڈیا میں جو ہے تھرڈ پارٹی کانٹریکٹ کا میں امپلائی ہوتا ہوں میں ڈان کا جو جنگ کا یا اس کا امپلائی نہیں ہوتا وہاں چیزیں روکتے نہیں ہیں آپ کریں نا لیبر لاس لیبر کورٹس میں ایک ہفتے میں قانون فیصلہ ہونا چاہیے سالوں لگ جاتے ہیں تو آلریڈی یو ڈونٹ نیڈ نیو لیجسلیشن یو جسٹ نیڈ امپروومنٹ ان ایگزٹنگ لاز جو ایگزٹنگ لاز ہیں ان کو امپروو کریں جو بلیک لاز ہیں ان کو ختم کریں آپ ابھی بھی پاکستان سیکورٹی ایکٹ کے تحت کاروائی ہو جاتی ہے کلونیل پیریڈ کے جو قوانین ہیں وہ آج بھی پاکستان میں لاگو ہیں اٹھارہ سو کے قوانین لاگو ہیں پاکستان میں اٹھارہ سو ستاون کے بعد جو انگریز نے سینسرشپ یا اس طریقے سے پاکستان کو دی فرسٹ ریلی As far as my knowledge is concerned, جو پہلی ریلی نکلی تھی وہ نائنٹین تھرٹی میں قائد آدم نے نکالی تھی اینڈ فار دا فرسٹ ٹائم اینڈ فار پر ہیپس فار دا لاسٹ ٹائم رتی جنا پارٹیسپیٹڈ ان دیٹ ریلی فار دا فریڈم آف دا پریس جو بامبے کرانیکل بامبے کرانیکل کے خلاف تھی کیونکہ بامبے بامبے کرانیکل کے لیے تھی کیونکہ بامبے کرانیکل نے جلیان والا باغ کی اسٹوری بریک کی تھی اور قائد اعظم کا یہ بشور فال ہے کہ سینسرڈ نیوز پیپر سے بہتر ہے نیوز پیپر نکالا ہی نہ جائے ہی کانٹیسٹڈ دیٹ کیس اس نے کہا کہ ایسا اخبار نکالنے سے بہتر ہے جس پہ پریشر ہو سینسرڈ ہو اس سے بہتر اور پھر پھر بامبے میں بامبے کرونیکل کے حق میں مظاہرے ہوئے وچ واز لیڈ بائی قائد اعظم یہ تسلسل اور وہی قوانین ہم نے پاکستان بننے کے بعد ان کو پاکستانی پاکستانی ایکٹ میں کنورٹ کر دیا ان سے ان کے میں سے بہت سے قوانین آج بھی اٹھارہ سو باسٹھ اٹھارہ سو ستاون ان کے قوانین پاکستان میں لاگو ہیں 
तो भी हम हमें थोड़ा सा रैशनल होना चाहिए हमें क्लियर होना चाहिए जो बातें आज पीटीआई की गवर्नमेंट कर रही है वो पीटीआई एज ए पोलिटिकल पार्टी 2018 से पहले क्यों नहीं करती थी जो पार्टी आज पीएमएलएन कर रही है वो वो जब गवर्नमेंट में थे उन्होंने क्यों नहीं इन चीजों को रोका टैका जब बन रहा था टैका वैसे तो आप देखें ना पार्लियामेंट ने बनाया है प्रिवेंशन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक क्राइम्स एक्ट और मैंने एक मरतबा जब कुछ शाहेब गिरानी का गालमन केस था तो आई कॉल डायरेक्टर एफ आई ए एनी सेंट मगर साहब इन पार्लियामेंटेरियन से कहे ना ऐसा कानून बनाते क्यों है कि जिसके लिए जिसके लिए मैं मजबूर हूं मैं ताबे हूं उस कानून को फॉलो करने पर तो आज भी इमरान खान को सिर्फ ये समझना चाहिए कि अगर उन्होंने इस तरह की अथॉरिटी बनाई तो हम जो लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं वो तो लड़ते रहेंगे लेकिन कल वो जब अपोजिशन में होंगे तो उनको ये कानून हर्ट करेगा जिस तरह जुल्फकार अली भुट्टो साहब ने लॉयर्स के हवाले से कि जी फॉरेन लॉयर जो है वो वो आपके लोकल केसेस में नहीं आ सकते और जब भुट्टो साहब का ट्रायल चला क्योंकि नैब का केस था नैब वाले फायर करना चाहते थे तो उन्होंने ये ऑर्डिनेंस ले आए जब भुट्टो साहब का ट्रायल हुआ तो यही कानून उनको हर्ट किया तो आज इमरान खान सिर्फ ये सोच रहे कि कल यही अथॉरिटी जो है कल जब पीटीआई ऑपोजिशन में होगी और कोई और किसी और पार्टी की गवर्नमेंट होगी वो इसी अथॉरिटी को यूज करेंगे भुट्टो साहब ने प्रेस एंड पब्लिकेशन ऑर्डिनेंस खत्म करने का वादा किया था जब वो हुकूमत में आए तो ही यूज प्रेस एंड पब्लिकेशन ऑर्डिनेंस अगेंस्ट द जर्नलिस्ट एंड अगेंस्ट न्यूज पेपर दैट इज पाकिस्तान स्टोरी नो थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स अ गुड वे टू एंड इट पर्टिकुलरली विद दैट जिना स्कोर इट्स नॉट वर्थ इवन हैविंग फ्री मीडिया इफ इट्स गोइंग टू बी सेंसर्ड इन एनी वे माइट एज़ वेल नॉट हैव इट and i think that's a very powerful way to put it and particularly if we look at it will come back to sting you yeah but acha aapne ek wo ending mein wo kiya so thank you so much uh, mazhar abbas sahab zarar khor sahab and of course javed jabbar who was also was going to be part of this and uh, and dr huma bakai as well uh, and uh, i look forward hopefully we can have a continuing conversation as the situation develops on this pmda but definitely i think some of the things that we have kind of come to a conclusion on one of the issues is that we we have to kind of remember uh, in respect to uh, in respect to this issue on freedom of the press it's a fundamental right it's article 19 in the constitution of the islamic republic of pakistan uh, you know with the concerns that we should depoliticize this and it is something that unfortunately is uh, well, becoming a little bit uh, uh, threatened by this politicization as mazhar saab uh, indicated in his final words it could come to haunt anybody and i think one of the key things that media plays in the public sphere is obviously the transparency media ka kaam hi hai ki public ko aagah karna ki kya cheeze chal rahi hain kis andaaz se chal rahi hain and uske upar ab jab stifle karenge unki awaaz to fir then the public are not going to be aware of that situation or circumstances So I think we had a, a very uh, colorful discussion, a very meaningful discussion, and if we are going to talk about regulation, as Mother Saab said, and and also Zarar Khoro Saab and and the rest of the panelists, it should be done in a structured way, not with this PMDA, which is without consultation, in done in secrecy. Uh, it is uh, it's part of a legislative creep of sort. एक तो digital media कहते हुए अगर fake news को regulate करना है, then why do we have to erase? um seven and many or uh, existing frameworks that have been beneficial let us look to refine mazhar saab mentioned javed jabbar's important work in the media commission report and ye sari cheeze karte hue hum phir sahi tarike se kanun sazi ho sakti hai is issue ke upar and i think that's something that we can walk away with so i hope that the, not only the public but uh, members of the government will also take reflection on this uh, short session we've had and um, i as your host sayed muaz shah uh as a director for the center for human rights at zaldin faculty of law signing off and inshallah hopefully we'll have another engaging discussion and episode in our series of zu dialogues and webinars and seminars thank you for joining without this